Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video. Today we are indeed back in black because this is the Conklin Durograph in black on black on black. I have midnight black, raven black, liquid uh, black. Mickey was here, you'd have black and blue black. 12 inches. Oh, you're way off. With a hint of rose gold. In my last episode of Pass Gas with Doug, I took a look at five different pens and let my viewers vote on which I should buy. Unfortunately, all of this came right in the middle of everything shutting down right across North America. One of the pens on the list, this Conklin Durograph, was an exclusive model to Goulet pens. Just a few days after I started the poll, Brian Goulet announced they were closing their warehouse to shipping and receiving starting on Monday, March 23rd. So I quickly jumped on my computer and ordered this pen. It was interesting that the Durograph was leading in the polls at the time, so no harm, no foul. The pen arrived very quickly, and as you'll see in the unboxing, I took all precautions to ensure a safe unpackaging. This pen has a very cool stealth look, and there is also an extra feature that I've ordered with the pen. So let's get back in black and take a look at this pen right now. Okay, so this package just arrived on my doorstep from Goulet Pens. It was one of the last shipments that went out uh, before Brian shut the warehouse uh, for deliveries and receiving. So that's sad to see, but they are still taking orders online and hopefully they'll be up and shipping once again. Of course, I'm wearing my protective gear. I uh, picked up the package outside and cleaned everything and made sure that uh, everything that came into the house was A-OK. -okay. And we're going to unbox this pen. This was the uh, winner in the poll, which I had to cut short. And this is going to be the Conklin Durograph. And the reason I, I got it so quickly was because it is exclusive to Goulet pens. And I didn't want to uh, lose the window of opportunity uh, to get the pen before they stopped shipping. So, we have some nice environmentally friendly packaging here. It's been a while since I've had a Goulet pens package. There's my invoice. And yes, there's the extra nib. And pack your order with slightly ridiculous amount of care to make sure that the writing products you love would arrive safely today. I'd love to hear what you think about how I've done. And it's Anita. And that is the flex nib that uh, I got as an extra because the Flex was out of stock in the Duragraph, but they did have them in uh, extra nibs. What else is in the box? And we have a sticker. That's nice. It's not a cat, but it's a sticker from Goulet Pens. And they have uh, not done the sucker thing anymore, which is probably a good idea. Oh, no, they have. So there you go. Well, uh, I don't know what flavor that is. Probably grape. But uh, we'll keep that. Save that for the children. Are you married or happy? You have a very tough beard, like nails. I'm saving this for the children. Yes. And here's the box. Outer sleeve, the serial number. This is a limited edition. It is uh, a piece of 1898 made. I believe that's because of the 1898. Yep, Conklin. And so this is 1052. 1052. Limited edition, black matte, median nib. And... It's a nice, nice soft box. And there's our pen. A 
It feels nice in the hand. Limited edition, 1052 of 1898. We'll look at this in more detail later. And let's have a first look. All this white is the powder from my gloves, of course. That's coming off on it. And, well, that's interesting. That, uh, this must be fairly old because that uh, white is supposed to be white there has come off or they're doing something new and it's fairly scuffed up too I don't know whether you can see that or not hmm one just about one turn to get it off and there we have the black medium and of course my zoom doesn't work with my gloved fingers but there's the medium nib it says Conklin and the Crescent Moon Breather hole, Toledo, USA, plastic feed. It is a cartridge converter. And I believe that screws on. Yes, it does. And it is a standard international. Of course, the standard international cartridges will work without screwing them on. Non-branded standard cartridges cartridge converter and the pen does not post as most dual fold style pens don't post very well my moon man's don't post very well either and it comes with a little documentation on your Conklin pen we'll let you pause that if you want to read it Congratulations, refill instructions, and a couple of standard international black cartridges. No, one blue, one black. Now I got white powder on everything. And we'll disinfect everything, and then we'll come back and take a closer look and I'll do a review with uh, the regular measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. And I'll write with it for a while. I've got time on my hands these days. And I'll, uh, after the writing sample, give you my opinion of this pen and what I like and what I don't like about it. Okay, I'm back after having cleaned out the pen, inked it up, and written with it for a while. What I want to do is go over the parts and features of this pen and do some size comparisons, provide some measurements, and then do a writing sample. Please stay tuned to the end of the writing sample where I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. This is the limited edition Conklin Durograph in matte black and rose gold hardware. This particular pen is numbered 1052 of... 1898. 1898 is the year Conklin Pens was founded by Roy Conklin as the self-filling fountain pen company. The self-filling pen Conklin invented was the Crescent Filler, now recreated by the new Conklin company as the Mark Twain Crescent Filler. I've had my eye on this particular pen not only for its unique and historic filling system, but because of its storied history of being promoted by the great Samuel Clemens. Samuel Clemens's testimonial in Conklin's advertising was typical Mark Twain, saying, quote, Also, I prefer it because it is a profanity saver. It cannot roll off the desk. Quintessential Mark Twain. God, God made idiots first. That was for practice. <laughs> then he made Congress. The Crescent Filler declined when the Lever Fillers became more popular, and Conklin created the Durograph in 1923, subsequently changing the name to the very popular Endura. Conklin, in addition to their version of the Parker Dual Fold in the Endura, also created the Symmetric in 1929 as their version of Schaefer's Balance. The Penn Company went out of business in 1948 but was revived in the year 2000 
and is distributed by Jaffa Brands, who also distribute Monteverdi, Stipula, Penider, Diplomat, and Schmidt, among others. I showed the packaging provided with this pen uh, during the unboxing, but it's, uh, it's good to look at it again here. Let's look at this box. This is just a reminder that this is a $60 US pen, and many pens of this price range do not come with boxes or packaging as nice as this. Unless, of course, it's the $9.99 Amazon Basics. And let's take a good overall look at this particular model of Jurograph. This pen comes in a lot of different finishes, but I doubt they are as cool and as stealthy as this one. If you're a Batman fan, I'm Batman. Or just love the look of black on black on black on black. Every time you try to operate one of these weird black controls which are labeled in black on a black background, a small black light lights up black to let you know you've done it. Then you'll love this pen. The entire pen being black from nib to the finials with the accents in this cool rose gold make this pen a real looker. And the finish isn't just matte black, it's like matte silk. It's almost slippery to the touch. The one thing I thought of using this pen for the last couple of days is how long will that satin finish last? I've had satin finished guitars that get shiny in those spots where they get used and rubbed quite a bit with your hand. Uh, they, they get shiny very quickly. So, so far so good though. Let's take a look from the top of the pen. I was surprised when I unboxed it that the Conklin since 1898 logo was so subdued. It is usually a bold white. I thought it might have been rubbed off since there are Quite a lot of scratches here on the finial as well. But I'm thinking that this might have been on purpose, since the usual bold white logo would look out of place on this pen. The top of the finial is a flat, black, shiny piece of plastic that tapers up to the rose gold ring, which holds the rose gold clip. The clip has a teardrop end with a slight upturn, which is nice, and is stiff, but usable. The barrel is straight until you get to the rounded rose gold ring, cap ring, which has engraved Conklin, Geograph, and crescent moons facing away from each other. The engraving is filled with black, or it looks black somehow, and it's a really nice touch. The cap tapers down to the barrel, and there's a small step, and then the barrel is straight until you get to another rose gold ring, and then there's the faux blind cap finial, which tapers down slightly. It's made of black shiny plastic to match the top finial, and ends in a flat black cap. The cap twists off with slightly under one full turn, which is nice, to reveal a section that is made of the same silky black material as the cap and the body and the black enameled number six medium nib and that is a steel nib. The cap will fit on the end of the pen but it does not post in any way that would be considered writable. This isn't unusual for this style of pen as the Durograph is a knockoff rip-off design steel of the Parker Duofold, and none of those pens post in any way that makes them usable. Now, I'm going to get flamed for saying that, of course, and I don't believe it for a second either, that it's a rip-off. The Parker Duofold is one of the most ubiquitous designs in the last 100 years. Many companies have adopted the style of the Parker Duofold, from Aurora to Moonman to Visconti. The only difference is no one cries copy, fake, or rip off when the pen isn't made in China. If it is a Moon Man or a Kaigaloo, it's a rip off. If it's a Conklin, it's good old USA ingenuity. But I digress. Let's take a look at the section and the nib. The section is a classic dual fold type section that tapers and then has a nice rounded flare. 
It's also a bit short, but those threads are barely perceptible, and that step is almost non-existent. The section is the same satiny material as the cap and the barrel, which is really nice. The number six size steel Conklin nib says Conklin in an ellipse, Toledo, USA, and has that uh, typical crescent breather hole that Conklin's known for and looks totally freaking awesome in that black enamel. Remember when you were with the Beatles? <laughs> sure. That was awesome. Toledo, USA isn't where this nib is made. Actually, I'm led to believe that this is a Yovo nib and made in Germany. I'm also led to understand that there was a recent switch from Bach to Yovo uh, due to some quality control issues. <laughs> and here is a look at the plastic feed. The nib, feed, and collar assembly all screw off very, very easily, which makes it easy to replace the nibs. And that's really nice. In fact, I purchased this Omniflex nib the same time I purchased the Durograph so that I could swap this out and see what the flexi writing experience might be. Many viewers have warned me that the Omniflex nib might be a total POS, and I'm interested to find out myself. The question you have to ask yourself is, is it the Omniflex that is the POS or my flex writing ability? We shall see. I think it's cool that the flex nib is in the same stealthy black shiny enamel as the medium nib. This pen comes with a screw-in type cartridge converter that is standard. And it also unscrews here so you can clean, disassemble and clean out the cartridge converter, which is also very nice. And the pen takes standard international cartridges. It will not, however, piggyback two standard cartridges. Don't even try it. I did, and let me tell you that your faithful reviewer took one for the team here. I put one cartridge in the barrel and one in the section. And when I put the barrel back on, it didn't even reach the threads. Um, and so I realized that screwing it down would make no difference because it didn't have that much room to travel. So I took the cartridge out of the section and turned the barrel upside down to tap out the extra cartridge. But guess what? It didn't come out. <laughs> it took me a half an hour of banging, prodding, and finally screwing and then reaming to get the <coughs> thing out. So believe me, it does not piggyback unless you want your piggies welded together. The pen feels very comfortable in the hand, and it actually feels lighter than my Moonman M600. So let's take a look now at some size comparisons. So here we are with the Conklin Durograph and a Moonman M600 a Kaigaloo 316, a Jinhao Centennial, and a Picasso 915. Let's take a look at the nib end. Now I've taken the caps off of all of the pens except for the Picasso because the Picasso is the only one that even remotely adequately posts. But there's the Geograph with the number six nib, the Moon Man, with a number six nib, the Kaigaloo, number six, the Jinhao with a number six, and the Picasso with a slightly odd size, a little bit bigger than a six. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And now we're back with the writing sample portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Conklin Durograph Matte Black with a medium steel nib. I had it open for a while, uncapped, so that's not the pen's fault.
And the ink today is a Roshizuku. Take Sumi. Let's check the wetness. Now the first writing with this pen was very smooth, but a very round ball feeling on the page with a lot of feedback. It was also a bit drier than this. And so I, I smoothed the nib a bit with some micro mesh, as well as I opened up the tines by flossing the nib a bit. The nib is stiff, uh, being steel, but it will yield a little bit of line variation. But being a medium, it hasn't got far to go. It's a bit silly to push this nib for line variation when there is an Omniflex right here to go into this pen. So we'll do that in a moment. Let's listen to this pen write. It's an okay writer. I'm not thrilled with the nib, but it's okay. As to reverse writing, it works okay, it's a bit scratchy. And as to some quick writing, The feed keeps up just fine. Now for the great experiment. How does the flex nib work? Well, let's see if we can do this live on camera. I've already got ink on my hands. Might as well get it more inky. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but I'm watching the ink trickle down through that feed and backing it off a little bit. So here we go. Well, I'm a lousy flexer, but I do have one of those Zebra G uh, nibs in a Jin Hao 159 that uh, starts out very, very fine and then flexes like this. This doesn't start anywhere near fine. It starts off as a even thicker than this medium, and it's very wet. You can see how wet that is. This is all still wet. Look at that. So... Um, as one of my viewers said, this is a real fire hose. And it's very stiff. If you don't flex it, it's very wet and writes fast. But I can't find a way to get a thin line out of it. almost barely touched the page. It's still dragging a lot of ink. So, anyway, interesting experiment. I'll have to work with that a little bit. There you have it, two pens and one. Now, what do I like and what do I not like about this pen? Well, the first thing that strikes me about this pen is its look. It really is a killer look. Black, silk, stealth. What's not to like about the look? I also like the way the pen feels in the hand. Not just that it's a dual-fold style pen, which I adore, but also that it is lighter than most of my other dual-fold alikes. 
In fact, it might just be a little bit too light. I like the large number six nib, the comfortable grip section, and I like that it takes standard cartridges. Where I find the pen lacking is in this nib. This is a Durograph, not an Omniflex. So with the medium nib, um, it's an okay writing pen. I was not thrilled with this writing experience. I've heard good things about Yovo nibs, but this one just lacks any character. There's a bit too much feedback on the paper, and it feels like there isn't enough tipping material to actually make contact with a good portion of the page. I'll probably work on it a bit more, and no doubt it will adapt more to my writing style the more I write with it. It just isn't as smooth and easy on the page as I expected. As to the flex nib, well, I guess <laughs> I'll have to practice, and we'll see. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to be notified the instant new videos appear. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.